Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks. Know that Maspeth has your back. From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. So whether you need it now or planning for tomorrow, through all the twists and all the turns, you can always find us right here in your neighborhood. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. Feeling it. Make wow. it three for three. And see you Lino. See you later. Here's a chance for Sias, and then there's a shot and a goal. Will Spare will take it all the way. Touchdown, Seahawks. The extra look and the goal. A gorgeous goal by. From the Monroe Athletic Complex in New Rochelle, New York, Varsity Media Sports Network presents this CHSAA Class B intersectional final featuring the second seeded Red Storm of St. John's Prep coming in with a record of 15 and 11 against the top seeded Crusaders of Cathedral Prep at 20 and 5. This game is presented by Maspeth Federal Savings. Dylan Butler here with my broadcast partner, John Perez. It is the championship round, and uh, these are two teams certainly not only geographically know each other well, but uh, at the very top of this Class B division. Uh, both had different kind of matchups in the semifinals, a really tough one especially matchup-wise for Cathedral Prep. They defeated uh, fifth-seeded Kennedy Catholic, and then St. John's Prep defeated Crystal Ray from Brooklyn. So it should be a fun matchup. Yeah, Dylan, this is the best rivalry in the Class B, bar none, the Red Storm, and, of course, the Crusaders from Cathedral Prep. Split the season series, a good, evenly matched team, and there you see the numbers right there as well. But, I mean, two of key players that I know that we're going to talk a lot about this afternoon and especially um, down the stretch in this game. Yeah, Red Storm looking for their first city championship since 2005, back when the great Jimmy Gatto was the head coach. And uh, one thing to expect from the Red Storm are a lot of shots. They love to take the shots. The shot clock might as well just be turned off. It's unnecessary for the Red Storm. Oh, don't wish that juju on that. We need the <laughs> shot clock. But having said that, though, yeah, Justin Green, what a guy to keep an eye out for, a 5'10 senior, really shifty. And, you know, we spoke to his head coach earlier in the week as well, John Kiggins, and he said that, you know, Green and then the other guy that we'll be featuring, Nick Gian, two superstars in this B division. They could have been co-MVPs. Either way, it's going to be a fun matchup between the two of them. Green, of course, in all-league selection. He will be the guy to watch wearing black and red tonight. Yeah, Green in their last matchup at Cathedral Prep, the band box that is Cathedral Prep, scored 37 points, including threes in, what was it, five straight possessions yep. uh, to cut the Red Storm's deficit in that game. But uh, leading the way for Cathedral Prep, listen, they're a team that wants to get up and down in two. And, and the thing that when we spoke to their head coach, Eric now, he says, we will press, we will be in your face, we will play you man for 32 minutes. The guy leading them offensively is wearing number one tonight, but it's Nick Gian, normally number 10. Uh, he is the Class B player of the year. Yeah, and certainly an appropriate number, the number one player in Class B as well. He's just a fantastic player, drawing some interest from Division II schools in the local area as well. But he's a guy that can just get a bucket when you need it. Don't be, don't be surprised if you see Nicky and taking it to the hole or just pulling up. 
We see uh, across the way the two head coaches who are very friendly as well. They've both said, we, you know, we, we talk probably once or twice a week. I'm not sure that's the case this week uh, with a championship on the line. But uh, John Kiggins across the way with Eric Nauman, the head coach of Cathedral Prep. There they are. You see Nauman uh, dressed for a, a night out, it looks <laughs> like, right, out of Christ the King. And there you see Kiggins the other side, a St. Mary's guy. So uh, both, even though they're coaching, Different Catholic League teams, both uh, rich tradition in the Catholic League as well. Well, listen, Eric Nauman, a Christ the King man, certainly knows how to dress for the occasion, so he <laughs> definitely dressed up well tonight. But, yeah, this is this is a meeting of the minds, two really experienced guys that have been around the block uh, in terms of basketball-wise. John Kiggins, I know that he doesn't have the necessary uh, – the, the – same amount of years that Nauman has under his belt, but he's local. He's a local guy that knows everybody in the tri-state area as well, works with the AAU programs. He's a guy that has a wealth of knowledge, and he's going to be one of the rising stars in the coaches uh, in this CHSAA. We'll take a look at the starting lineups for both teams. First for the visitors on the scoreboard, which is the Red Storm of St. John's and again we keyed on him in the pregame but certainly leading the way for them is Justin Green so much of St. John's offense will go through their number one there you see as well Tahim Penn Sam Wooding Bozeman and an interesting player in this is Aris Krismides he's a senior who only averages a, a shade under two points a game but when we spoke with Kiggins he called him the complete spiritual and emotional leader of this team, the guy that you need, especially in a game like this, to give you all the dirty work. Oh, yeah, and you need glue guys like that as well. A good Dennis Rodman or Ben Wallace-esque guy that will grab double-figure rebounds but maybe score one or two buckets when you need them to be. Either way, Dylan, this game will be decided on the glass as well and what team is not making shots. We'll show you the starters for Cathedral Prep now, and uh, they are the home side. Both teams just finishing up their warm-ups, and again, uh, Damiano Catone, an interesting uh, guy in this mix as well. Uh, the point guard, we've got Guillen, you saw us there as well. Flattery, Joe Fitzgerald coming all the way from New Hyde Park uh, to go to that school right behind the Queen Center Mall. And uh, also J.A. Van, uh, Van Wallendale, excuse me, the senior, uh, averaging 12.6 and 7 rebounds a game. Yeah, and... It's going to be a fun matchup on the glass as well. Joe Fitzgerald only 6'2", which, you know, when you think about that in terms of your bigs, traditionally not a big guy, but what he's able to do um, down low, he plays bigger than his stature. We'll take a quick break, and we'll get you the start of the CHSAA Class B Intersec Intersectional Championship. And it's on the Varsity Media Sports Network, and it's presented by Massabeth Federal CHSAA. Savings. Class B final between St. John's. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. Varsity Media has all your Catholic League basketball coverage starting this week. Three attempt rims out. Oh, the putback! Jackson! Here comes Briscoe. Showtime! On Thursday, it's the Long Island Girls and Boys Championship Games from Hofstra. Friday, New York City Class B and A Boys from Monroe College. On Sunday, City Boys Double A Quarterfinals from Hofstra, plus semifinal and championship games in City Boys Double A. Wednesday, March 9th, and Friday, March 11th. Nobody has you covered more than Varsity Media. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and watch all games free on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Maspeth Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks. Know that Maspeth has your back. From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. So whether you need it now or planning for tomorrow, through all the twists and all the turns, you can always find us right here in your neighborhood. Over the middle, he's got a man. It's complete. See you later. See you later. Going long, wide open for Rossi. 
He gets it. Parazzi, foot raise, and five. Make it. Touchdown. Punch, power punch. The trickery rider gets it back. Goes over the top for Haberman. What a catch. Just Ross Simmons strips him. That's loose. And Ross Simmons is going to take this in the other direction. Make it. Touchdown. Touchdown, East. Parents and athletes, why leave your college career in the hands of amateurs? Varsity Media produces professional college recruiting videos that you can use to help land a spot on the team. Our highlight reels have proven to save thousands of dollars in college tuition. You've worked hard and put the effort into your high school athletic career. Don't take any chances when it comes to your future. Varsity Media has been producing college recruiting videos since 2010. We understand what college coaches are looking for, and our attention to detail on your highlights will separate your resume from others. Stand out from the crowd will help showcase your talents. Contact Varsity Media today and order a college recruiting video. Maspeth Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks, know that Maspeth has your back. From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. So whether you need it now or planning for tomorrow, through all the twists and all the turns, you can always find us right here in your neighborhood. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. Any player, coach, or spectator who Welcome back to, to the Monroe Athletic, Athletic Complex in New Rochelle. Dylan, Dylan Butler, Butler, John Perez here. It's the CHSAA Class B Intersectional Championship. And yeah, go Red Storm. That's the banner from some of the students. And uh, it was funny, John, in our conversation between these two coaches, you know, I, I think both, not just maybe because you needed an easy pass to get from Queens, but uh, would have loved to have this game somewhere in Queens if, if at all possible. But you know what? The fan bases, they traveled here tonight. Obviously, it's been a long time since both have had a chance to win a championship. And I think because of that, big crowds here in New Rochelle. Well, there's a good hunger. They're two great athletic departments that do a really good job of getting their students to come to games. There's really a fraternity, sorority type atmosphere with both the athletic departments in that the other athletic teams support themselves as well. You're seeing a couple of St. John sweaters from the baseball team, the softball team, same deal over at Cathedral, different teams out there as well. So a good job by St. John's and Cathedral bringing their fans out and administrators as well. See the starting lineups are being introduced to the crowd, and we showed you a moment before the break. But let's pull up again the, star, the leading scorers in Class B, and listen, true, true to form, right? With the leaders for both teams, it, it, it's kind of serendipitous for us because you see here, right, Gian, right there, and Green. You know, not much separating the two of them. Literally, a point. And maybe that's a difference as well for, for player of the year. Yeah, it's just the game of inches as well. And I think, too, when you lead a team to a perfect division record as well that they've done in Class B, you get the nod there. Gian uh, doing a really good job, getting a good supporting cast as well. One of the interesting things is that we were thinking about was perhaps J.A. Van Wallendale maybe took some votes away from him. At least that's what the thought was. That was not the case. Gian, though, um, Second leading scorer in the league, but what he just contributes to Cathedral, you throw the cherry on top with 20 wins this year, as well as a perfect 12-0 in conference play. And let's not forget, this was a Cathedral team that started 1-5. Yeah, both teams again, right? And it, it, it kind of almost mirror images where, where St. John's Prep also, uh, they start off their year 0-6, uh, right? And, and one thing that, too, John Kiggins, their third-year head coach, said is, We've played everybody, right? And, and you look at their 0-6, they played St. Anthony's, Kellenberg, St. John the Baptist, Port Washington. 
Uh, so even though they did lose their first six games, there was that understanding is they just it was going to take that one. They did get that one um, against Beth Page, and, and, and from there they won eight of their next nine. And obviously, right now you want to you know it's a cliche to say, but you want to play your best basketball uh, in March, uh, and they certainly are. Oh, no doubt, and. The one thing that's so impressionable with these kids, too, is they just need to see the victories, and they have to experience it, and it's a snowball effect. You win one game, then two, then three. Next thing you know, you're 12-0 and in conference play. Same thing with St. John's Prep as well. The, the wins just keep on coming, and it amounts to 5-6-7, um, and that's where these both of these teams are peaking at the exact right time. Our players to watch, our impact players, fittingly, both wearing number one and both right in front of us getting ready for the opening tip, which goes to Cathedral Prep. That's Fitzgerald spinning in the lane, gets his own rebound, put back not there. Cathedral crashing the glass, but here comes St. John's Prep, and it is Green misses his layup, and a foul was called going up. Yeah, a lot of contact down low as that was Van Wallendale initially, and then they get the foul on Fitzgerald. So this sends Bozeman to the line, another one of the all-league selections. Kind of that hybrid between a guard and a forward. Bozeman knocks down the first. Averaging 10 points a game. Really good rebounder as well. You can see the athleticism and the size, and St. John's Prep takes the early lead. You know, when you look at the size of both of these teams, it's actually just pretty even when you think about it. You're not going to find a 6'6", 6'8", player on the floor, and tallest player is probably 6'2", 6'3", on both respective sides. Guillen missed the lefty layup. Rebound shot was by Van Wallendale. That missed as well. Here's Penn. Chance of defense coming up by the Cathedral Faithful. Nice step by Penn, baseline, reverse layup, no good. Van Wallendale gets the rebound and gets it into the capable hands of Guillen. His pass, though, intercepted by Green. Look out from behind. Green is stripped. Back we go the other way. Guillen lost his handle, and he stepped out of bounds as well. You can start to see some of the jitters on both of these teams. And you know what? It's good to have butterflies in the beginning of a championship bout is we'll look at it again. But just Guillen sees the double team crashing in on him. Not a lot of real estate, even though there's a lot of real estate behind the stanchion, not a lot of real estate along the sideline where he was navigating. We said it last night in the Long Island Catholic Championship, an, an epic overtime win for Holy Trinity over Chaminade. But... Shooting backgrounds are important come this time of year because it's not the brick wall that both teams are used to. Some teams have a stage, right? Cathedral Prep has a stage, but uh, here it's, it's, it's not easy to get used to this wide open space behind each basket. No, and St. John's Prep plays in a bigger gym than Cathedral. Fitzgerald doesn't get the roll. The putback is in. Brian Flaherty. You know, they call him Slim. That was his nickname on his warm-up jersey as well. Just threw up a wild shot, and it fell. Green slashing through. There was a foul, though, called on the drive. But I think you bring up a great point with the optics behind the basket. And, you know, one of the things that you can see the players getting used to, too, the depth of perception. Um, we got a mural around us the entire time as the bucket falls for the, for the Johnnies. A um, little bit different aesthetically for both of these teams tonight. And a little thing to keep an eye out for. That was Chris Medes on the inbound. So he is already above his season average of 1.9 with the bucket from way downtown. Guillen's shot off the mark. And here come the Red Storm running. Green for three off the mark. And a timeout called a 30. So we'll keep it here by Eric Nauman. Nauman, it's interesting, John. I I've never heard this before in a way to get players. Now, obviously, you know, these schools, uh, you know, you recruit and, and you especially want to get the CYO programs, right, the, the parishes. 
he goes about it in an entirely different and a unique way. He's a referee. So during <laughs> CYO games, he's about to inbound the ball. He goes, hey, what, what high school are you going to go to? Right. And he's already kind of pumping up Cathedral Prep. Now, obviously, you know, too, he's not going to necessarily get uh, the top guy, right, in those parishes. But, uh, he, you know, maybe get the two, second, third, fourth guy. And he also, in addition to, you know, maybe speaking to some of these uh, players on the court, he's also looking in the stands at the at the parents. What are they doing? What Are, are they yelling at the ref? Are they uh, yelling at the, at the coach? So uh, really unique and interesting way. Yeah, and that's... That's definitely a first. It's uh, <laughs> such a small community, too, in CYO as well. Um, that's something uh, – that's a first, and you know what? Maybe it's replicated in the future. Listen, nobody uh, nobody wants that. their other coach to have an edge, right? So you're right. Maybe, maybe they'll uh, do something there uh, as well. And I, I don't know. Maybe eventually we see like a Joe Arbatello, Christ the King start reffing games as well. Who knows? I don't think Arps is. <laughs> <laughs> he wears enough hats as yeah. he is at Christ the King. Gian crashes for the board. He's missed another jumper. And I like that timeout by Nauman just to settle his team down. Um, should be noted as well, Miles Tucker comes on for the Crusaders. I think J.A. Wallendale took an elbow. He's being seen by the trainer as the Red Storm get another bucket. Yeah, floater by Wooding. Gian spins, kicks it out. Three-pointer is good. Miles Tucker. Well, and Tucker, too, the backup point guard, a junior. He's a very good player. Um, one of his other brothers uh, was coached by an assistant by Eric Nauman as well, so he knows the Tucker family uh, very well, and good to see him drop his first three this evening. Penn, nowhere to go. And we kick it back out. There's Green. This time guarded by Tucker, who's a very, very good on-ball defender. Green misses it. Crusaders looking to run. Ahead of the field. Oh, that should have been a layup. Instead, it is a layup by Tucker. The pass by Flannery. Sometimes you're too selfishly unselfish. Either way, it works out for, uh, for Cathedral there. How about Tucker already with five? There's a foul on Guillen. Our referees today, Sean Morgan, Mark Casamassa, and Londale Hartfield. Well, and Nauman said as well with Tucker that he's the point guard of the future. This will be his team in the future. Um, and I think we have uh, either a wet spot or some blood on the floor uh, under the basket. But, but yeah. either way, Cathedral's, you know, in a good spot in the future as well. You know, Miles Tucker is there, and um, a St. John's prep team that, you know, is pretty young as well. So these are two teams that we could certainly see in this game a plethora of times in the future. Yeah, they're, they're, their main players, or impact players we showed you, they are both seniors. So Green and Guillen. Uh, both will be gone, but you look at some guys like, like a Timmy Richardson, right? He's a sophomore for St. John's Prep. Uh, he'll be back a little bit more of a, a senior-laden St. John's Prep team, uh, especially in terms of, like, key players. But, uh, yeah, listen, you know, John Kiggins was a varsity assistant five years ago, became the varsity head coach. He's the AD as well at St. John's Prep. And uh, as a result, right, kind of had to step away a little bit from the AAU circuit, but that's where a coach that we got next NYC before that, the Long Island Lightning as well. So uh, he's been having his his fingerprints on the game for a while, uh, as has, uh, of course, Nauman, a 1990 graduate of Christ the King, which to me was one of the greatest errors, really, at least in recent history in the league. We've seen a lot of Cardinal Hayes this year. Of course, the Jamal Mashburn uh, was in 1990, and uh, Christ the King was absolutely loaded. Foul on the floor will be called on Penn. That Christ the King team, by the way, had guys like Khalid Reeves, Derek Phelps, Carl Beckett, Jamal Faulkner, an unbelievable litany of players uh, playing for the Royals at the time. 
Yeah, and they've just continued that over the last 30 plus. Uh, Dylan, I, I hate to say it, it's it's probably recent for us, but for some of our audience, it might say recent. That's that's 1990. <laughs> Fair enough. Seven six early on the lead for Cathedral Prep. Here's Green, bounce pass inside. What a terrific look as Chris Medes. We're not sure what his season high is this year, but he's not the guy expected to score the points. Hey, but he has so far. If he's got a role in sales in the future, uh, a 400% quota will certainly get you paid. Inside, a tough bucket by Flannery. Second time that Flannery's thrown up a floater and it's gone in. He's done a good job down low. Like I said, they call him slim. But you could see on the defensive end as well, Crusaders have to figure it out down low at home with Van Wallendale at the trainer's table. Penn back to Green. Switches it. Wooding. Drives. Throws up a wild shot. No good. Fitzgerald rips down the board. Here comes Guillen the other way. Pulls up from three. Good. You love that shot if you're going to make it. Normally in the past you hear, oh, well, if it's a transition three, don't take it. But if you're Nick Guillen, you've got the keys to the Cadillac, and he cashed it in. Penn, foul line jumper, and he was fouled on his way up by Flannery. Love the assertiveness of Penn as well as 6'2 senior. He's got some really good size coming off a good semifinal matchup where he poured in 19 points, but it's just the savviness of Penn to get to the line, and um, he's been well at the free throw line as well this year. I love the line in our conversation as well with John Kiggins of Penn. He says he's got an old man's game uh, to him, so a lot of mid-range jumpers and floaters as well, and we don't see the, the converse in the long socks, but Penn knocks down both. You know, the moss is there, though. <laughs> certainly is. 12-10. Cathedral prep the lead. Final minute and a half of this first quarter. Traveling violation called as Flannery kind of blew a tire there at the foul line. Well, and not just that. Our elder statesman, Penn, opening the door as well and pulling the chair from behind him. Here's Green. Little stutter step drive and the finish. Haven't said his name a lot in the first quarter, and I expect to say it a lot more for the final three quarters, but he's got to get going for the Red Storm. So does this guy. Guillen with Green on him. Works off the Fitzgerald screen. Pulls up on the foul line. Knocks it down. That's now two for two, John, for Guillen after missing his first few. Yeah, he hit the three from the wing and now from the free throw line as well. Anywhere in the gym is the range of Nick Ian. I think from Applebee's outside is still within his range. Yeah. Here's Penn. Front rim no good. Battle for the rebound. Fitzgerald rips it down. Rebounds will be key in this one, especially with both teams loving to shoot the basketball. Flannery misses, but there he is again. Fitzgerald underneath to clean it up. Well, Flannery is saying that that was a pass at Fitzgerald. Good <laughs> awareness right there, though, to clean it up. And that's something that I like about Fitzgerald down low. Um, has good positioning, reads the ball well, and easy pickings for him. Green misses the jumper. Guillen pulls it down. Shot clock is off with 12 seconds left in this first quarter. And a foul called. Foul on George Chris Ahoyas. See if they run it to Guillen or use him as a decoy. And no decoy here. Here he is. He's got a limited range too. This time he'll drive. Stops. Three on him. Flannery was unable to get that second opportunity. And that does it for the first quarter. The Crusaders of Cathedral Prep, the top seed. They've got a 16-12 lead over the second-seeded Red Storm of St. John's Prep. You're watching the New York City Class B Intersectional Championship presented by Maspeth Federal Savings and the Varsity Media Sports Network. 
Varsity Media is the tri-state area sports leader. We offer an array of services for any team, coach, player, athletic director, and parent. From game film to live streaming, we are available to cover your event anytime, any place. Looking for an enhanced experience? How about a professional broadcast with multiple camera angles, announcers, graphics, and instant replay? Need a highlight reel? We produce individual highlights for college recruiting and team highlight videos for end of season banquets. And when it comes to social media, nobody has you covered better than us. Hype videos, sideline highlights. We can tailor custom videos to make your team stand out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Why waste your time dealing with anyone else? When it comes to sports video, Varsity Media stands alone. Contact us at 516-403-2050 or online at varsitymedia.net. Welcome back to Monroe Athletic Complex. I'm not sure. Like, that's not a red storm, John. It, it, it's like Johnny a, Thunderbird, Jr. So, Jr., correct. Yes. I didn't know that Johnny Thunderbird at St. John's had children. Well, in bird years, because Johnny Thunderbird is now 12, that's probably, I don't know, 35, 36. <laughs> Speaking of threes. Yes. Chris Ahoyas knocks it down for St. John's Prep. And this is a, a, a situation that we're seeing out of the Red Storm as there's Gian. Another triple, his second. He's already got eight. You mentioned the range from the Applebee's right outside the door. I think you mean the Applebee's by the Queen Center Mall instead. <laughs> Loose ball picked up, and a jump ball was called. Possession will... Go to Cathedral, but what I was going to say before was this is a situation that Eric Nauman might be a little bit concerned about because he said let will allow Justin Green more or less to get his, but don't let anybody else hurt you, right? And when you go up and down the St. John's prep lineup, you've got a lot of different guys who have scored the basketball. I think Flannery's going to have to come off now too for Cathedral. Not sure if he's got a cut. He'll go to the trainer as well. And yeah, the trainer is going to be busy. It, I, I saw the, the thumbs up for Van Wallendale before, but he's still checking, I think, for like a leaky faucet there, maybe out of his nose. Well, listen, the Crusaders have depth. Tucker's on the floor now. Um, we mentioned a very efficient backup guard, uh, probably a starter on most teams in B as Fitzgerald gets the end one. But you look at Miguel Guerrero on the floor as well. Uh, Cathedral, a team that is relying on their depth as well. And there's no reason to believe that they can't weather the storm. How about the strength there by the 6'2", 195 Fitzgerald? Caught it at his hip, was fouled, and was still able to finish. Gets the friendly bounce as well from the foul line. That's five now for Fitzgerald. Miss inside by Patarakis, and we go the other way. Guillen swings it. Fitzgerald picks it up, though. Puts it on the floor. Inside, Fitzgerald. Back-to-back -back buckets for Joe. I love his strength down low. He's got really, he's got, he's got a good body for a person his size as well as... Um, they're going to call a foul against Cathedral. It's on Tucker, first team's fifth. Back in the game is Krismides. Comes in for Bozeman. But I like Fitzgerald's size. See, you see him right there. He's got great footwork. And he's got big man moves. He just doesn't have big man size. And there's Green with Tucker on him. Green stops, kicks it back out to Penn. Penn will try the jumper and that's perfect. Nothing but nylon for Penn, the senior. A uh, lot of experience on the floor right now for the Red Storm. Ooh, Tucker throws it away. 
Haven't really seen the crisp passes out of Cathedral yet. Not clicking on all cylinders um, as Damiano Catron comes back on for the Crusaders. Um, that's something that they're going to have to shore up over these uh, final six minutes and eight seconds. Hey, I could tell him three-year varsity player. On oh, the triple by Green. He's got five, and it's a 24-20 game. Catone, a little pick and pop. Fitzgerald picks it up inside. This is his first. The second with the right hand. How about the strength of Fitzgerald? He had three guys all over him, collected his own miss, and was able to convert. He's got nine already, and they've been hard points to get as well. Yeah, nothing's been easy, especially against this Red Storm interior. But boy, he's been fun to watch. 536 remains in the second period. There's Green. Goes baseline. Off the mark. Rebound by Varmerhausen. There's Guerrero. Kicks it back out. Catone drives. Baseline jumper off the mark. Battle for the rebound. The battle continued for a moment. Yeah, 15 on 15 crime right there as uh, Catone gets tied up with Chris Ahoydis. The foul was on Volmerhausen. It was the seventh team foul. So this will send the Red Storms Chris Ahoyas to the line to shoot the one and one. He's a guy that can get shots if need be. Now, the lion's share is going to go to Justin Green, and rightfully so. But he's someone that you don't want to leave open and very efficient at the charity stripe. Yeah, he's that catch-and-shoot specialist for the Red Storm. What a great ending in that semifinal he had as well, right? Seven of his ten in the final four minutes against Crystal Ray goes one of two from the line. And here's Guillen. Guillen from three. Good! That's his third triple of this first half. He just continues to amaze. Green thought he was hit on that. Steal by midcourt. Guerrero got his paws on that as well. Paterakis gets it to the capable hands of Green steps back on Fitzgerald and Fitzgerald will be called for the foul little hand check and you know if there's going to be any demerits on Nick Ian, it's his passing so far in the outlets and unfortunately like we mentioned because Fitzgerald doesn't have this looming stature he has to throw it into a tight window but when he does that at least that's the second outlet pass that he's turned over Green knocks down his first. D2, D3. Interesting. We saw some college coaches here as well in the gym. Second free throw is good. I think I saw Mount St. Vincent. I know Sarah Lawrence is watching. Um, NYU has an eye out. Guillen steps back. And you know what? They're bringing the playground, Guillen and Green are, up here to New Rochelle. Green's got to get going, though. Let's see if he converts here. Just misses. Got the good first step. We go the other way now. Valmerhausen outside for Guillen. Triple. He is red hot. His third three of this quarter, fourth on the game. Green. And boy, did Green need that bucket for him to get himself going, but also keep his team keeping pace with Guillen. Stepping back, Guillen, he's feeling it. That one maybe a little bit forced. Guerrero pops off the mark. Loose ball will go to the Red Storm. They look to push. Green behind the back pass. A little floater off the side of the backboard. Here is Guillen. Checks his rear view. Stolen by Green. 
Look out from behind. Green avoids that pressure. Hands off the extra pass. Great look. Corner three is good. Sam Wooding. Sam I am. Red Storm needed that. A very passionate player as well. Pumping himself up and the crowd after that bucket. Here we go again. Mano a mano. This might as well be at Hoffman Park. Right by Cathedral Prep. What a move <laughs> by Gian. I mean, there's just, there's not much more that you could say about his first step. He's feeling it in the first half, and he has risen to the occasion. Here's Green, 34-28, the lead for Cathedral Prep. Green, hands off. Chris Ahoyas gives it right back to him. Green tries to go baseline, had it knocked from behind. That's a great defensive play by Flannery. Down the court we go. Layup is good by Vollmerhausen. Yeah, Vollmerhausen just sticking down low, collecting the easy outlet pass as if it was a touchdown as he scoops it in. And a foul was called on the baseline. Balmer Housen picked up the foul. It's his second. This will send Wooding to the line to shoot the one and one. And Wooding, one of those Swiss Army knife got a type of guys, or like a microwave, if you want to see, where you could put him in the starting lineup, and he doesn't start. He comes off the bench right away, brings a good offensive energy. Um, just a great player that championship teams need. And for the Red Storm, if it's not going to be Justin Green and it's uh, you know only going to take one point out of uh, Chris Medes, then you're going to need Sam Wooding to step up, and he's done so this year, averaging 10 two points a game. He's split his free throws. Final two minutes of this high-energy first half. The floater off the mark. Wow, what a great job not to travel. And then a foul was called. Huge credit there goes to Brian Flaherty. Watch this again by, by, by Flannery. That he was able to keep his dribble was the reason he wasn't called for a traveling violation. He's been really impressive in some of the things that he's been able to do because if you're going to talk about a schoolyard-type showdown with uh, Gian and Green, Flannery's more of the circus act as well. Gian, front rim, no good. You know, he threw up a couple of floaters early on in the first quarter that if you're just watching him and not the ball, you're like, what are you doing? But they go in, and then he's dribbling from one knee, a la Michael Scott. Speaking of the knee, that's where the ball went off and will go the other way. One twenty-seven left here, up in New Rochelle. It's the Class B intersectional championship game. It's Dylan Butler with John Perez. Game one of two here. We'll have the Class A final coming up at around eight o'clock tonight. Catone, what a drive by the point guard. St. John's, at least from an emotional standpoint, has to get the bucket here. They do, and have to go into the locker room down single digits. Penn with the drive there. He's got six. Final minute now of this first half. Gian, and again, a foul was called. A reach in on Richardson. That's his first and the team's fifth. 53.3 seconds remains in the second period. Good defender is Richardson, but he gets a tough assignment with Gian. Oh, that was a deep two by Gian. Wooding to finish the other way as well. Big last possession, Dylan, with the shot clock turned off. And you can see who wants the ball. Gian with 18 in this first half. Chance of you can't guard him coming up from the Cathedral fans. 10. 
Gian to his left. From three, off the mark. Can Penn get one last shot from midcourt off? It goes off the backboard and out. And that does it for the first half. What an entertaining and high scoring first half. Yeah, Gian has just been amazing. It's been the Nick Gian show. Uh, you know, he knows that it's win or go home, and it's always the top players that perform at this point as well. But I obviously he steals the show and he gets the marquee. But I really enjoyed watching Volmerhausen come off the bench as well. Did a really good job on the glass and uh, did really well uh, in between the lines, Dylan. We'll be joined now by Cathedral Prep head coach hey. Eric Nauman and how you doing? Good, Eric. How are you? Uh, so far, so good. So we, we uh, Dylan Butler, John Perez, uh, a high flying first half. Yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts on the on the first 60 minutes? Uh, offensively, we're, we're relying way too much on uh, Nick. We're gonna need some help. Uh, Joe Fitzgerald getting in foul trouble hurt us a little bit because he was dominating down low. Um, can you hear? Yeah, we got you. There we go. All right. um, yeah, like I was saying, we need to get Joe in, in, involved more down low. Uh, I don't think anyone could stop him down there. But our transition defense is terrible right now. If, if we can uh, stop that, I think we'll be up a lot more. But we'll see. Um, I think number 14, uh, John Anthony has a broken nose. So that's going to hurt us. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to go back in the game. Um, but if not, then somebody else will step up. All right, thanks for clearing that up. And then just my last question to you is, uh, Justin Green, a very potent player for St. John's. Yeah. You, guys, you guys kept him in check. What are you going to have to do in the second half to keep him out? Well, we're going to run people at him. Uh, we're going to have Damiano and Miles on him. And then if worse comes to worse, we'll put Miguel, Cabre uh, Miguel Guerrero on him. But it's, like I said earlier, it's somebody else has to beat us. You know, let Justin get his. He could score 30 as long as we get the W, and some, someone else has to beat us. And so far, some of these other guys are getting baskets. I'm not happy about that. I'm going to let them know now. That was going to be my, my last question for you, Eric. What's going to be the message to your guys as you head out for the second half? Well, we got 16 minutes. Just keep fighting. You know, I always say one of my old coaches, Jerry Ingenio, said the first six points of the third quarter are the most important. We get the first six. We're up 13. That it's uh, you know They're climbing up. If they get the first six, we got a game. So... We'll see what happens uh, coming out, but we'll, we'll be ready for it. I expect you will. Thanks, right. Eric. Thank Appreciate it. Good luck the rest of the way. Thanks. That's Eric Nauman, the head coach of Cathedral Prep. We'll take a quick break. We'll get you some first-half stats and some highlights as well. It's the Crusaders of Cathedral Prep, the top seed, with a 40-33 to lead over the second-seeded Red Storm of St. John's Prep. It's a New York City Class B intersectional championship game. Presented by Maspeth Federal Savings on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. Varsity Media has all your Catholic League basketball coverage starting this week. Three attempt rims out. Oh, the putback! Jackson! Here comes Briscoe. Showtime! On Thursday, it's the Long Island Girls and Boys Championship Games from Hofstra. Friday, New York City Class B and A Boys from Monroe College. On Sunday, City Boys Double A Quarterfinals from Hofstra. Plus semifinal and championship games in City Boys Double A. Wednesday, March 9th and Friday, March 11th. Nobody has you covered more than Varsity Media. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and watch all games free on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Maspeth Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks. Know that Maspeth has your back. From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. So whether you need it now or planning for tomorrow, through all the twists and all the turns, you can always find us right here in your neighborhood. Over the middle, he's got a man. It's complete. See you later. See you later. Going long, wide open. Perazzi, he gets it. Perazzi, foot raise, 10, 5, make it. Touchdown. Punch, power punch. 
Trickery, Ryder gets it back, goes over the top for Haberman. What a catch! Just Ross Simmons strips him, that's loose, and Ross Simmons is going to take this the other direction. Make it! Touchdown! Touchdown East! Parents and athletes, why leave your college career in the hands of amateurs? Varsity Media produces professional college recruiting videos that you can use to help land a spot on the team. Our highlight reels have proven to save thousands of dollars in college tuition. You've worked hard and put the effort into your high school athletic career. Don't take any chances when it comes to your future. Varsity Media has been producing college recruiting videos since 2010. We understand what college coaches are looking for, and our attention to detail on your highlights will separate your resume from others. Stand out from the crowd will help showcase your talents. Contact Varsity Media today and order a college recruiting video. Masmuth Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks. Know that Masmuth has your back. From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. So whether you need it now or planning for tomorrow, through all the twists and all the turns, you can always find us right here in your neighborhood. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. Varsity Media has all your Catholic League basketball coverage starting this week. Three attempt rims out. Oh, the putback! Jackson! Here comes Briscoe. Showtime! On Thursday, it's the Long Island Girls and Boys Championship Games from Hofstra. Friday, New York City Class B and A Boys from Monroe College. On Sunday, City Boys Double A Quarterfinals from Hofstra. Plus semifinal and championship games in City Boys Double A. Wednesday, March 9th and Friday, March 11th. Nobody has you covered more than Varsity Media. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and watch all games free on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Masmuth Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks. Know that Masmuth has your back. From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. So whether you need it now or planning for tomorrow, through all the twists and all the turns, you can always find us right here in your neighborhood. Over the middle, he's got a man. It's complete. See you later. See you later. Going long, wide open. Perazzi, he gets it. Perazzi, foot raise, and five. Make it. Touchdown. Punch, power punch. The trickery rider gets it back. Goes over the top for Haberman. What a catch! Just Ross Simmons strips him, that's loose, and Ross Simmons is going to take this the other direction. Make it! Touchdown! Touchdown East! Parents and athletes, why leave your college career in the hands of amateurs? Varsity Media produces professional college recruiting videos that you can use to help land a spot on the team. Our highlight reels have proven to save thousands of dollars in college tuition. You've worked hard and put the effort into your high school athletic career. Don't take any chances when it comes to your future. Varsity Media has been producing college recruiting videos since 2010. We understand what college coaches are looking for. Welcome back to the Monroe Athletic Complex in New Rochelle, Dylan Butler, John Perez. And John, you made an old school reference, but it's an appropriate one here when we were off the air. 
You said here comes Willis Reed, and it's J. N. Wallendale. We uh, Van Wallendale. We we heard from Eric Nauman at halftime. Thought perhaps had a broken nose, but we saw J. A. the senior uh, getting ready, much to the delight of of the Cathedral crowd and. Looks like he's going to give it a go in the second half. Yeah, and we'll see, too, kind of like uh, Will is coming out of the tunnel. He'll be coming out of the huddle as well. Keep is. an eye, though. I mean, a nose break is a very serious injury as well. He gets taped up and, you know, hope that uh, he doesn't worsen it. But either way, a big addition and more firepower coming back for the Crusaders. So our high score is in that first half. Guillen with 11. Green with nine. So that, those were our two impact players as well. And those were leading scorers in the first half. Green hands off to Penn. Top of the key, three. Back iron, no good. Quick put back is good. Wooding. Wooding's shown a, a, a versatility to his game. He's the glue guy. He's the glue guy. He does every little thing right. Now he's face guarding Nicky and... Um, as well, and one thing that Nauman did say is that he can't, he doesn't mind Green getting his. It's other players, specifically like Wooding, getting buckets that irritates him. So we'll see if Cathedral makes that adjustment as well. But for St. John's Prep, it's going to have to be somebody who's not named um, Justin, Justin Green. Green, right, getting buckets. Here's Wooding, Gian on him. Nice pass into the post. Lefty layup attempt was off the mark, and Cathedral Prep goes the other way. A runner. Back iron, no good. Active hands by Bozeman, but it will stay with Cathedral Prep. Here's Guillen's numbers. How about that? Four of seven from downtown. Seemed like it was more. He was bringing the house down as well. Love the echo in this gym, too. Catone out to Fitzgerald, gets it right back. Catone for three, no good. Look at Van Wallendale. This place, is especially the, the crowd for Cathedral Prep, will go bananas if Van Wallendale scores. How about the fifth three for Guillen? I think they'll go bonkers if he hits a three as well, uh, Guillen. As Bozeman can't get it to go, one and done for the Red Storm. What could be a concern here for St. John's Prep is you can't go three for two or three for nothing. Guillen misses that three attempt, and here comes Green the other way. Right, and you can't force anything either, but for Green, about time that he gets it to go as Kiggins calls a timeout uh, for the Red Storm, but, you know, they need buckets. They can't let this lead teeter around 10 points for the Crusaders and they're going to need Green to continue going and Kagan's challenging his team right now and you know he's a guy that's challenged him all year like you mentioned Dylan 0-6 at the beginning of this year playing tough competition but he feels that that's prepared them for this moment and I'm not sure what was said in the locker room but the Red Storm have responded and then just for additional insurance Kiggins making his point as well. Yeah, he said our strength is a blessing and a curse because it's shooting the ball. So there's been some games where we've hit 16, 17 threes. The curse still comes in when we're not shooting and it doesn't go in, right? So uh, there's been a tough time in those games because there's not a lot of size. So when you're missing those threes, a lot of times it's that long rebound and or if it pops up, you're not getting those rebounds inside against a lot of teams. Uh, right, 100%. And for the Red Storm, I think they've done a good job on the glass, but at the end of the day, like you said, Dylan, they're going to need the ball to go in the hole, not outside of it. Guillen lost on the way, and it'll be St. John's prep ball. First half stats has Cathedral a 24-9 edge on the glass. There's Green, pulls up from three. Back rim, no good. And there's what we said before. How about Green, though? Playing safety. And a foul called on the floor. Well, and the transition defense as well, and that's what um, Nauman was talking about. It was the transition offense that wasn't so well for Cathedral on that as uh, 
as Green gets the pick and a fresh possession for the Red Storm. They run stack. They go out for Wooding for three. Side rim no good off of Penn's leg and a jump ball is called. Possession goes to Cathedral. Yeah, and, you know, for Penn, feels that he wishes he had that one back. The ball never really uh, got to his hands and then a jump ball, good defense by the Crusaders. Van Wallendale, head down. Foul on the floor, though. And you have to, you know, obviously remember that Van Wallendale barely played in that first half, probably 30 seconds before he came off. Um, and, you know, he's a little cold as well, and that's something to keep an eye out for as he gets his legs under him. Oh, great look inside. Catone, the inbound, finds an open Fitzgerald. He's got 11 now, which is, in fact, his season average. Green, the floater, missed the mark. Good job by Flannery just to take it himself. A little bit too much there for Flannery. As Penn comes away with it. 45-38. The lead. Penn foul line off the mark. Well, St. John settling there. Van, uh, Van Wallendale, a nice catch, but he can't convert either. Here comes Penn. Penn inside. Bozeman lost it. Hot potato. And it'll be Cathedral Prep Ball. Yeah, both of these teams forcing a little too much for my liking, Dylan. Uh, and we're seeing a lot of stagnation on the offense as well. Not really a lot of flow outside of the ball carrier. There's Catone. A heart-to-heart -heart with this coach was one of the biggest turning points of this year. Inside, Fitzgerald! You know, Joe Fitzgerald's really impressed me this evening. What he's been able to do um, with his positioning and one of the main reasons why you know, the Crusaders have been perfect, as you see, some little extracurriculars afterwards. These two teams know each other, and like I said, a great rivalry in Class B. Well, it's a simple case of it's a jump ball, and neither guy wants to relinquish their hold on it. Well, listen, they've been, both of these teams have been fighting for and dreaming of this moment all year, and they're now... 12 minutes and change from achieving that goal, uh, barring we don't say the dreaded O word, but, you know, they're leaving it all out on the floor. Green to inbound underneath. Wooding for three. No good. Catone. There's Guillen. Guillen. Off the mark, no good. Jump ball. Gets back to Guillen. Whoa, a little out of control. Guillen gets it right back. He wants to go a little showtime here in New Road. Good D. Inside is Fitzgerald again. He's got a good wingspan. Did a really good job of keeping the ball away from the interior defenders and just scooped it home. 15 now for Fitzgerald. Green from three. His second three of this quarter, third of the game. Johnny's needed that bucket, but they have to stop Fitzgerald and Guillen, or maybe Catone, and that's not going to happen there. Fifty-two, forty-one. Green the other way. Back rim, no good. Cathedral with a chance to put the foot down as well. They could slow it down. Time on their side. Don't rush anything. Get the open shot. Get a good look. Spinning in the lane was Fitzgerald, and he'll go to the line. Fitz. Fitz. Fitzgerald, good Foul footwork. Working hard. Has the advantage on Chris Medes. Fitzgerald misses the free throw. Scholarship. 
kid at Cathedral Prep, which is why he goes from New Hyde Park in Nassau County all the way to Cathedral Prep. Goes one of two from the line. You know, my mom told me when I was a kid, just go where the money is, you know, and can't blame her. And you're getting a high-class education, too, at Cathedral. My mom said go to St. Francis Prep. I had no other option. Well. <laughs> Penn, baseline, reversal! I like this timeout here by Kagan's, kind of slowing his team down as well, and, you know, has to really emphasize the defensive effort for the Red Storm, because it seems as if the Cathedral Prep Crusaders just come down the floor every time with a response, so I'm not sure what the adjustments he's going to have to make. But the one thing that you do like out of Cathedral, we haven't said Guillen's name in a while, and that's the depth that they have. You look at Fitzgerald, obviously uh, Van Wallendale coming back, and Vollmerhausen coming on, a lot of depth here uh, for Cathedral. Depth in the next game as well. Ford and Prep, Nazareth, the top two seeds in the Class A as well, doing battle here. Eight o'clock tip for that one between the Rams of Fordham Prep and the Kingsmen of Nazareth. You know, Fordham Prep might uh, might feel more like the home team here. I mean, they're only a stone's throw away, obviously, uh, in the Bronx. Well, a lot of their guys, too, from the Westchester area as well. A little bit out of control there was Van Wallendale. Missed the mark. It's a 10-point game. Here comes Wooding. A little point forward action, if you will. The floater, though, from the foul line off the mark. Forced it. He was looking for a foul, and that's probably the third or fourth time that we've seen St. John's in this half when they miss a shot immediately look to the ref. And whether it's a foul or not, you have to continue to play on. Van Wallendale inside. Big bucket by Vollmerhausen. Now, Vollmerhausen's only a sophomore, so I'm interested to watch him and Tucker in the future for this Cathedral team. Foul on Guillen, his second, and the team's third. And the Cathedral contingent letting him hear it as well. <laughs> As we've seen before, the Red Storm runs stack. And if you're a defender, right, you want to get right in the middle of that stack. You want to be the peanut butter in that sandwich. Yeah. Stay up, boy. Stay up, boy. Green up top. Catone on him. Nearly lost a dribble. Catone all over him. Gets it to Wooding. Now it's Guillen on Wooding. Goes baseline. Good move by Wooding, but the finish wasn't there. We go the other way. It's Guillen. Behind his back, Guillen hands off. Three-point attempt off the mark by Van Wallendale. Paterakis nearly lost. Van Wallendale is just all hustle out there. Inside is Green. Well, Van Wallendale was itching to get back into the game, too, as well. When he was at the trainer's table, you could read his lips saying, hey, I want to get back in there. Inside, Balmerhausen. Fifty-seven, forty-five, the lead for Cathedral Prep. Wooding. Missed the three. Oh, that's a great rebound, but a foul was called on the floor. Yeah, I like the positioning underneath um, by Chris Medes. To get that offensive rebound as Catone picks up his third. And he's hobbling as he comes out. Back in for him is the junior, Miles Tucker. Shot clock off, 26-5 left in this third quarter. There's Penn. Tucker guarding Green closely. Anybody but Green right now is basically what Cathedral are saying. 
And Green's trying to get open. Tucker's all over him. And good hands by Gein and uh, Flannery to go to the deck. It'll be another jump ball, and the possession goes to Cathedral Prep with 6.1 seconds left in this third quarter. Fantastic job by the Crusaders on the defensive end. They can hold for one. And we'll see what they draw up here with Gian in the backcourt. Timmy Richardson in, the sophomore. He'll be right on Gian. Here we go, Gian harassed by Richardson. Gian, the Euro step. Runner too much, nothing there. And that's the end of the third quarter. We've got eight minutes left in regulation time in this New York City Class B intersectional final. It's the Crusaders with a 57-45 lead over the Red Storm. It's a, on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks, know that Maspeth has your back. From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. So whether you need it now or planning for tomorrow, through all the twists and all the turns, you can always find us right here in your neighborhood. Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs. Welcome back to the home of the Mustangs at Monroe College. The MAC, as they call it up here in New Rochelle. Dylan Butler, John Perez with you. It's the New York City Class B Intersectional Championship presented by Maspeth Federal Savings. Not too far from Maspeth Federal Savings headquarters are these two teams and Cathedral Prep with a 12-point lead going into the fourth quarter. Yeah, and just multiple locations smattered along um, the St. John's to uh, Cathedral route. Justin Green, he's got 17 on the game. In their last matchup, he had 37. However, that one was a loss as well. Baseline, rejection from behind by Vollmerhausen. Tucker pumps the brakes. Three-pointer is good. Van Wallendale. J.A. is A-OK -okay from downtown. Good to see him get back into the offensive flow as Cathedral uh, really separating themselves right now to begin the fourth. Tucker's second, the team's fifth. 15 point lead. Three rims around. Van Wallendale, the rebound. And unfortunately, this has just been a game where St. John's has not made their shots, and that's been the reason why they're trailing by double digits, especially with this guy as well. Gian in the lane and a reach-in foul called on Van Wallendale. Only his second, but you know, for St. John's now, can't afford to bleed the shot clock. They have to go quickly. And I guess from a mental standpoint, just try and cut this lead down by fives to give yourself a chance. And Penn fouled by Van Wallendale. Yeah, Van Wallendale not making it easy on Penn driving to the basket. And you can see there, too, just the decision, literally just having a man on green at all times. You saw that at the top right of your screen. Well, and that's work to perfection. It's taken him out of his rhythm. Even though he's got 17 points, it really seems like a quiet 17 points because Cathedral's just done everything right on their end of the floor. They're making shots, they're making good reads, and they're doing a good job defensively not giving St. John's offensive rebound opportunities. Penn knocks down both. Here's the side though that they need to get a stop. Yes. And that's been difficult, especially with Guillen. Look at him pulling up now from three. Back iron, no good. A lot of times with Gein, it's hard to say that was a bad shot, right? Because he knocks down so many of them. 
a high volume shooter is certainly Gian. 100%. He had Vollmerhausen open down low, though. Uh, Would have liked to see the pass there, but either way, I've got no problem with him pulling up. Foul calls. It was on Flannery, his second. It's the team's eighth, which sends Chris Ahoyas to the line. Missed the first. Here's Gian. Tucker in and out. Great rebound. Flannery wanted the foul call, didn't get it. A little bit helter skelter right now. Here's Wooding. An open green. Buries it. And if he's got space, he's going to put it down. They needed that three. We got a whistle here. I think Nauman's seen enough. A good press by St. John's. Down 10 with six minutes to go, Dylan. Still a lot of time. They've got to make stops, the Red Storm. It's a full timeout. We'll take it with them as well. Cathedral, a 60 to 50 lead. We're watching the New York City Class B Championship presented by Maspeth Federal Savings on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Over the middle, he's got a man. It's complete. See you later. See you later. Going long, wide open. Perazzi, he gets it. Perazzi, foot raise, and five. Bank it. Touchdown. Punch, power punch. Over the trickery, Ryder gets it back. Goes over the top for Haberman. What a catch! Ross Simmons strips him, that's loose, and Ross Simmons is going to take this in the other direction. Make it! Touchdown! Touchdown, East! Welcome back to the MAC. Dylan Butler, John Perez here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. It's the Class B championship in the New York City Catholic League, and it's the Crusaders with a 10-point lead. And now we're seeing some full court pressure by the Red Storm. Guillen rejected from behind. I think that was Penn who got a piece. We go the other way. Wooding drives, kicks. Three-point shot off the mark. A wild one, and Guillen hands off. Tucker pulls up. Off the back rim, no good. Van, oh, what a putback by Van Wallendale. Yeah, a couple of buckets for Van Wallendale now in the fourth quarter. Doing a really good job coming on the, uh, coming back off the mend. It just looks, John, like any shot, but Green's at this point is kind of a bad one. <laughs> like he's he's the only guy who seems to be hot right now. For the Red Storm. There he is right now, splitting defenders, losing it though. Going one on three. Well, and that's the thing with St. John's over this second half, and quite frankly, this game, Dylan, is that they just haven't been able to put everything together like Guillen did. Like, for instance, you see Green on the other end splitting two defenders, but he can't get the open layup. Uh, Cathedral's done a good job altering and, and uh, causing deflections in the passing lanes, and, and that's just a good defensive effort. Chris Ahoyas. That's a good move. Very good move. He had a block down at the other end as well. But it's going to have to compound itself and, and snowball where they get the stops and make their shots. And for Cathedral, that's all you've got to do. And the city title is yours. I like that move there too by Van Wallendale, right? He, he was out, out the three-point line, stepped in, knocked it down. Penn from three. He gets it. And a timeout called by the Red Storm. And it'll be a 30, so we'll stay right here. You go back, John Perez, to 2005, which was the last championship for the Red Storm in Class A. They were also the first ever champion in the Catholic League. They've won the AA championship back in 1928. You had a 
course, some more championships sprinkled in. For Cathedral Prep, their last title was back in 2001 when they were the Class B champs. And certainly guys like Mike Leander and the Wurzbicki twins, all of which went on. Nice little pipeline at the time from Cathedral Prep when Frank McQuayle was the head coach. Take a trip up the LIE to Queens College, and, and that really worked out well for the Knights. You heard as well Eric Nauman mention his name before. Jerry Angelino was an assistant coach for Kirk Papanakis at Queens College. That's when they uh, were one of the better teams in their conference. Used to be the, the NICAC, right. switched over now, right? Well, now they're in the ECC, and Queens, uh, Matt Colley are doing a really good job in the ECC this year. They finish um, at 500, hosted a playoff game the other evening um, as well. They've got a, a ton of underclassmen, so they're going to be good in the future. So perhaps the, the new Roaring Twenties for <laughs> Cathedral and Queens College, um, you know, perhaps both programs see success this decade. Following McQuail, Ivan Cohill was the head coach for Cathedral Prep. Brad Wisbicki went on, played overseas. I mean, talk about a guy who was un underrated, and what a layup there by Catone. Well, that's another underrated player as well, because what Catone was able to do, it won't show up in the box score, but he's done a really good job defensively this evening. Lefty layup by Wooding, but you really can't afford if you are St. John's to trade baskets at this point. Absolutely not. Van Wallendale. There he is again. Joey Fitzgerald. How about Fitzgerald? He's been more of a quantity over qual excuse me, he's been more of a quality over quantity. Hasn't played a lot today, but when he has, he's contributed on the offensive end and has done a really good job on the glass. He's been kind of a double double machine. On the lower end of it though, right? Eleven points, a shade under 10 rebounds a game, but uh, what a performance by Fitzgerald today, 18 on the game. Well, when you think about it like this, Dylan, it's only a 32-minute game, number one, and you've got a guy like Gian who can light it up, and he's pouring in an average of 20 points a game, and he's had games where it's been obviously a lot more. Um, so for him to average a double-double, uh, specifically on the point side, pretty impressive because Cathedral does have offensive weapons as well. Wooding, who averages 10 a game, he's over his average as well. Fitzgerald! He's been great tonight. He's been absolutely great tonight. Just take another look at this. Using the offhand and a nice strut afterwards. <laughs> Chance for an old-fashioned three-point play. Hey, he deserves it. Going for point number 21. And remember, he was in foul trouble, did not play a lot in the first half. I'll tell you what, going to Baruch, he might be making a, a case for himself, right, to, to play a little D3 ball. I don't see why not. Reigning Cuniac champs, they play in the NCAA tournament tonight. I know John Elise has got his own things to worry about tonight, but <laughs> hey, this game will be archived right after uh, the game ends. That's right. On the Varsity Media YouTube channel, Fitzgerald. He's just having fun out there now. 75-61, green step back three, no good. How about another rebound? Want to see Cathedral just wind the clock down here. Get a good open shot. Game in control, but Catone has other ideas. Well, that's not really in their, in their DNA either. I know. We expected the track beat, and, and that has delivered. It's been all gas, no break for Cathedral. That's what I was hoping for on the way here, but well, I hit the brakes a few times on 95 and other roads. Me too, brother. <laughs> Richardson to the line, looking for his first point of the game. And you're at the light downstairs. It takes forever. To, it's just We're here now. That's all that matters. First free throw back rim. How about 23 points for Joe Fitzgerald? 
Yeah, he's been exceptional. Absolutely exceptional. You obviously scout him um, not as much as you do Guillen, but that just that's what championship teams have, Dylan. They've got the guy on the marquee, and then you've got, you know, Robin to Guillen's Batman. And he also gets another rebound there as well. Two more. Give him 25. How about that? 25 in the biggest game of his career so far. The senior showing out here at Monroe. We're going to check if we get a chance to see what his season high is. Fitzgerald. We know he's got a double-double tonight for sure. A minute 44 left. Crusader Nation kind of feeling it now and realizing the championship is practically here. Guillen. Double team. Passes out of it. Loses it though and Penn comes the other way. Penn on Cantone. You know what? Cantone did just enough. Yeah. He did, a good, he did just enough to force the turnover. They're obviously in between the years of the Red Storm and Cantone right there. I just love his scrappiness and the grittiness that he's shown this evening. Full timeout, we'll take it with him as well. 118 left in the New York City Class B Championship presented by Massive Federal Savings and the Varsity Media Sports Network. Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks, know that Maspeth has your back. From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. So whether you need it now or planning for tomorrow, through all the twists and all the turns, you can always find us right here in your neighborhood. Well, those fans are getting excited as Cathedral Prep, a minute 18 away from their first city championship since 2001. Dylan Butler, John Perez here. I think they're getting a little too into it. <laughs> but either way, you know what? These are the memories that you make as well. You go to class with these guys all day, especially at an all-boys school. You get to really know um, these guys, brothers for lives, and, you know, just a great memory had by... Obviously, the student athletes and the students that made the drive up. And I think what you love, too, about this championship run, as Flannery gets another deuce, is that it is a shared experience, especially tonight, right, on the hot, biggest stage. Guillen has been the guy who has kind of carried the torch throughout the season, but it's been passed around pretty well here tonight. Well, particularly by this guy, Fitzgerald, too. Uh, he has been outstanding. Previous high this year, 19. He shattered that early in the fourth quarter. And how about another rebound to boot? I think the only thing he hasn't done is flushed one down. I'm not sure that's in his DNA. Shot clock is off. We'll get some... Foul called on Penn. And now all the Crusaders have to do is hold the basketball, and they are the Class B champs. A lot to be proud of by their effort tonight and this season, running perfect in the league. They got the MVP, Nick Ian. Huge contributions by Fitzgerald, and you could see the added spark when J.A. Wallendale came back on for the second half. This team looked like it was on a mission. Catone gets on his horse. Cathedral Prep are your CHSAA Class B intersectional champions. And a celebration they'll remember for a lifetime. 79-64, the final score. Cathedral Prep's first city championship since they won the Class B back in 2001. 
Just a phenomenal year. Great job. Congratulations to Eric Nauman and his staff as well. Running perfect in the league. A lot to be proud of this whole season and tonight. 21-5, and five, the record for Cathedral Prep. St. John's Prep falls to 15 and 12, but what a win as both teams will shake hands and will await the awards presentation, which is coming up shortly. You know, unfortunately, it's always one of the trophies that you don't want is the runner-ups. And, you know, St. John's has a lot to be proud of this year as well. You know, 15 wins, 7-5, and five, uh, rebounding after going 0-6. Good job by St. John's as well and John Kiggins. And they'll be back in the future. They're a team to keep an eye out for. Um, congratulations to the seniors on a good career as well. But um, for St. John's, tough loss. It's going to sting today, Dylan, but a very memorable season for them. It has been, and, and, and really... You know, both coaches, again, we, we've spoken about mirror images. They both talk about bringing their programs back up, right? Of course, and we referenced uh, the great Jimmy Gatto, right? The former longtime head coach at St. John's Prep was a 500 uh, win guy in the Catholic League, which is never an easy thing to do. But that's something, too, where, where you know, John Kiggins had these conversations as well, right? with Jimmy Gatto and talking about the history and he learned about the history and and what St. John's Prep has been in the past. Guys like Talik Brown and, and others who have kind of led the way for the Red Storm and this is what they wanted to do, get back to these important games. So yes, even though they fall short in this one, you got to say, you know, they're getting St. John's Prep back on the map and back where they expect to be. Right, and, and it's tough to tell, especially, listen, we were all there, Dylan, you and I, a million years ago. You know, it's tough to tell a teenager, don't let this get to your head, don't hang your head, but they do have a lot to be proud on, and I'm sure in the future when they think back to their high school memories, they'll think about it with fondness. Unfortunately, couldn't get the job done tonight, but either way, a lot to be proud of. And, you know, St. John's is back. John Kagan's has the program in the right direction, and I only expect them to go up from here. And when we spoke with Eric Nauman ahead of this game, he mentioned this was a program that had a few seasons in a row of one win, right? Literally one win. And they've he's certainly turned it around. And, and again, right, his background comes from Price to King, which clearly, right, is, a, is always a... Uh, powerhouse not only in the city but also in uh, the nation as well so uh, he's got cathedral prep going as well and you know what when you win a championship and you're the CYO ref maybe a little bit easier right those <laughs> those question marks uh, or those questions for those CYO kids to try to uh, get them to step on the court for Cathedral Prep. Well, it's a validation. They know that they're going to get a good education at Cathedral Prep, and now that you've got the banner to, or at least the hardware for Cathedral Prep, it adds the notoriety and validation as well as, um, you know, they're honoring the uh, B Division team on the floor as well. And, you know, a lot that those guys have to be proud of this year um, as well. And the MVP, of course, Nick Ian, um, gets serenaded by the MVP <laughs> chance by this crowd. But as we said, it was, it was really so many different guys tonight who stepped up for Cathedral Prep, and, and that's what you need, again, to, to win a championship, I think. You know, seven points for Van Wallendale. His coach said, I think he broke his nose, right? And all seven of those come in the second half. And, you know, Flannery diving on the court for loose balls, six points on the game for him. Miles Tucker, a guy too, his job is just get out in there and defend, right? Still scores five points. All of those, I mean, they, they look, they add up, right? Right. Well, I, I do want to I do want to highlight those two players that you mentioned too, Tucker and Flannery. Flannery really got Cathedral going. Remember, they shot, uh, we don't have the numbers right in front of us, they probably missed their first four or five shots down the floor, and then Flannery throws up a circus shot, it goes in, the teardrop. Um, so that got them on the board. And then obviously, Miles Tucker as well doing a good job on the um, on the offensive end for the second unit. We'll take a break and come back for 
uh, the lifting of the championship trophy as well as our player of the game interview. You're watching the New York City Class B Intersectional Championship presented by Maspit Federal Savings. A junior from St. Joseph by the sea. Parents and athletes, why leave your college career in the hands of amateurs? Varsity Media produces professional college recruiting videos that you can use to help land a spot on the team. Our highlight reels have proven to save thousands of dollars in college tuition. You've worked hard and put the effort into your high school athletic career. Don't take any chances when it comes to your future. Varsity Media has been producing college recruiting videos since 2010. We understand what college coaches are looking for, and our attention to detail on your highlights will separate your resume from others. Stand out from the crowd. We'll help showcase your talents. Contact Varsity Media today and order a college recruiting video. Welcome back to the Monroe Athletic Complex. Class B champions are the Crusaders of Cathedral Prep. Top seed won at 79 to 64. We asked Eric Nauman as they announce uh, multiple all-league winners, but we asked Eric Nauman, who is the Class B Coach of the Year, as they're announcing right now the Class A uh, coach of the year, that's Brian Downey from Fordham Prep. But we spoke to Nauman, right? We kind of said, what's was there a turning point, right? And he, and he kind of circled back to that loss to, to Germantown Prep, right, out of PA, mm -hmm. out, of, out of the Philly area. Felt that was really the only game that his guys didn't give their maximum effort, right? And there was a challenge, and it was especially a challenge to Catone there as the leader. And he said, look, you know, are, are you going to give us a maximum effort? If not, go, go bold, right? We don't bother with this. And obviously, he answered the bell, and, and so did the rest of the Crusaders as well. I think when you develop a relationship with your players like that, you build a little bit of credibility, obviously, and you can talk to them like that, and you can be straight up with them. These are young men that... Uh, Eric Nauman is leading, and sometimes you have to challenge them. Sometimes they deserve a pat on the back. Sometimes they, you know, that pat's a little bit harder. Um, but for, for Damiano Catone, he responded in bunches, and I think he did a really good job tonight. He's done a really good job in the postseason as well. And you know what? That's no knock to the bowling team, but you know that Damiano's passion is for basketball and for this Cathedral team, and He's done everything from a leadership standpoint. He's contributed on the floor. He's a good student. So, you know, sometimes uh, your best players or some of your best players, when they're the most coachable, the other players pick up on it, and that also gets them in a rhythm and puts them all together. So the most valuable player in Class A... And by the way, sneak preview, that's our impact player for <laughs> Fordham Prep right now, Omari Ward, their point guard. i got to say, for us on Varsity Media, it's kind of literally full circle because we did Fordham Prep's first game of the year against Cardinal Hayes, and uh, not necessarily maybe their last, right? But they'll play this game. If Fordham Prep, or I say whoever wins the Class A, championship game will go on and play in the state tournament, taking on either Canisius from Buffalo or Holy Trinity, the team that we saw last night with an incredible overtime victory over Shamanan. If you missed that game or if you want to uh, watch it again, it's on our YouTube channel. Well, check out the Twitter account too, the game-winning shot as well. Just a raucous atmosphere at Hofstra. Good job by um, both Long Island schools to get everyone to travel over to uh, uh, to Uniondale and uh, you know get ready to go against Hofstra uh, at Hofstra. Speaking of Hofstra, there's there's a lot more basketball to be played there. Uh, great decision by the leadership of the New York City Catholic League, right? That's Hofstra's always been the the, the final 
place to play for the Long Island Catholic League, right? Fordham has been that in, in the city because of COVID protocols. Fordham wasn't available. St. John's wasn't available. So Hofstra uh, steps up. Rick Cole, their athletic director, uh, former St. John's guy as well. So uh, this is our schedule for you. All these games will be on the Varsity Media Sports Network on our YouTube channel. Uh, this is the quarterfinal round on Sunday. And uh, if you've watched our games on the Varsity Media Sports Network, a lot of these, we, we've got actually all all of these teams, all eight of them, have uh, been on Varsity Media. Malloy, St. Francis Prep, the old school rivalry there in Queens. That should draw a big crowd out at Hofstra, Christ the King, and Cardinal Hayes. St. Ray's, Stepanak, and the finale, Holy Cross, and Bishop Lachlan. Uh, that's the quarterfinals. We've got all four of those games. That's after that state semifinal between Canisius and Holy Trinity. So that's five basketball games for uh, you and I and, and the rest of our crew here at Varsity Media. But uh, that one will be a lot of fun. Then we go to the semifinals, also at Hofstra, and the... The big one, the Class AA Championship game, also on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Uh, our thanks, of course, to our presenting sponsor, Maspeth Federal Savings, for making that all possible. But it's going to be a fun uh, week or so out at Hofstra for us. It's going to be so much fun. It's always the best when it's at Rose Hill or St. John's in the past. Uh, I expect the atmosphere to be at an all-time high, especially a year after not playing you know, a full season. I know those fans are going to be really excited. They travel well, and now it's celebration time for Cathedral Prep. Yeah, so they're all uh, getting it's like T-shirts as well as an award. Love the swag. As Pete Goico and Paul Gilberry, Kevin Piggott as well, handing out the awards. You know, I wonder if they're all one size. You know, with the double A guys, you're going to have to get maybe some two X's and some, you know, just some big dudes up in the double A. But there's Joe Fitzgerald. Uh, fantastic game today for him. And there's Gian. He's been the guy to lead them the entire way. Had 23 here tonight. And there's Eric Nauman getting the championship plaque from Paul Gilvery and his guys lined up. Just can't wait to get their hands on it. Well, you got to get the photo first. You know, let's get the housekeeping in order. But well, you need the what photo. Yeah. Yeah. But what a year for Cathedral. This is what they worked really hard for. They get the shirt to boot, which, by the way, what a great shirt. Like I, I, you know, I want to go back and play and, and have the chance to win that shirt. Well, we could we could ask Paul Gavari if you have any left. You got to earn it, Dylan. You got to earn it. <laughs> so there's the the picture you mentioned as well, right, with the plaque and the team and the players and one that will be remembered for a long time for the Cathedral Prep Crusaders. Getting the crowd into it, you know, audio transmits over to uh, to the photo form as well. We'll endeavor in a moment to get our player of the game, and we'll get Joe Fitzgerald's. Never mind game, right? I mean, that's a game of a lifetime mm -hmm. for Joe Fitzgerald, our varsity media player of the game, our Ron Pierre working on. Uh, bringing him over here to our broadcast table. We'll get Joe set up in a moment as his fellow Crusaders going uh, to celebrate with the fans and uh, we have with us now Joe Fitzgerald, our Varsity Media Player of the Game. Uh, Joe, first of all, uh, congratulations. Uh, you've got your plaque. Uh, how, how's this feeling right now? It feels great. We've worked all season for this and uh, couldn't have asked for a better ending. 
Joe, it, it looked as if this team in the beginning of the game got off to a slow start, but you and, and Damiano really took um, control, Brian Flannery down low. How much of an onus did you guys put on yourselves to get your team back into the game early on? Hey, in the first quarter, we lost one of our big players, John Anthony Van Wallendale. He actually has a broken nose, so Dom, me, um, Nick, everyone realized they had to stand up. And we did that, and that's the reason why we came out as champions. Joe, you're, you're 6'2", but you play like you're 6'7", and, and another double-double, but uh, a, a season high for you tonight. 25 points, uh, 19 was your previous high, but to, to do it on this stage in the championship game, I mean, uh, I guess you just felt it huh, in the second half. It feels good. Uh, made my family proud. I have a lot of people here. Whole class is here. A lot of people to thank, and couldn't have done it without them. First, Joe, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Joe. Yeah, no, first first championship since 2001. It's been a long time for Cathedral Prep. You could uh, get another banner up in, in the gym of yours, huh? Yeah, it feels good. I know a lot of people from that team are here today, and a lot of hands to shake. <laughs> are you running for mayor? Is that? <laughs> Maybe I will. It looks good on the transcript. <laughs> there you go, thinking about the transcript. Uh, Joe, my last one here, and obviously still a ways to go, but what are you going to remember about this year as a whole? Um... Probably the people I played with. Uh, these people are no longer players. They are actually my brothers. We've worked our well, butts off every single day, and I truly think we earned this because we wanted it. We wanted this really bad, and we said that at the beginning of the season, and it's come to truth. Joe Fitzgerald, an incredible performance in the championship game. Kudos to you and your fellow Crusaders. Uh, enjoy this one. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Joe Fitzgerald, the varsity media player of the game. 79-64, the final score as Cathedral Prep captures the Class B championship game. Class A coming up in about 20 minutes' time. And then it'll be the top two seeds there as well, Fordham Prep and Nazareth, an 8 o'clock tip for that one. For my broadcast partner, John Perez, Dylan Butler, want to thank our entire crew as well. Chris Sweeney, Ben Turchin, Ron Pierre, and A.J. Nieves as well. The Class B championship goes to the Crusaders of Cathedral Prep. Class B intersectional championship game presented by Maspeth Federal Savings. You watch it right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports.